it's a really great city and I think probably is my favourite in the world that I've seen so far anyway. I think Porto is my favourite city. My favourite city of Sweden is Gothenburg, which is like not a common answer, I imagine. I haven't seen, I've only been to Gothenburg and Stockholm. So it's like, um, but I, I think because Gothenburg, I went to a football tournament there when I was in like year 10. So we, that was like my first experience of going away with my friends. And I think that was why it made it special. I think, yeah, Porto is my favourite because like everything there is great. Like the food's great. Like, have you ever been to Porto? And like, I've, I've not been to Porto, but I've only ever been to Lisbon in Portugal. So they do like this, like, yeah, there's like this sandwich called like a Franceschina, which is like meats, cheese and like i don't know it's hard to explain i could never make one myself and there's like a beer sauce but and the people there i don't know if it's but like it's not even like it's because they know the video it's like when i first went out there the first two times when no one had a clue who i was like i always wanted to go back so i think it's just an amazing city and because i'm so keen on football like everything in the city is like intertwined with the club um and obviously they're like they're, there's the riviera which is like this really nice river I just think, yeah, it's a, it's a really great city and I think probably is my favourite in the world that I've seen so far anyway. Yeah, sounds amazing. Definitely, I'm going to add it to my bucket list to go to. So yeah. you, you went to Porto and you fell in love with the club. I fell in love with it because I think the issue is, right, so I'm, I'm a Leeds fan from the age of six because of family, like my mum's side is from Yorkshire. So obviously, like, I supported Leeds. And, but the problem is I lived in Norfolk all my life and I didn't, I wasn't aware, like, how to get to, I've been to Ellen Road maybe like four times. So I'd never really experienced like the family side of supporting a club, which I don't think a lot of like, people do really nowadays, like because, which is people are allowed to support whoever they want. But if you don't go to a game and you don't feel the atmosphere, then I feel like it's harder to feel an attachment to a club almost. Mm. And like, going to Porto, like it made sense to me. Like people like went with their family. It's a massive family thing. Like the most women I've ever seen at a football ground 100% was in Porto like mm. it means just as much to everyone and they all come together in like this unity and it was something that I'd never experienced myself and they took me under their wing as well so it made it just very easy to fall in love with it like and the passion that they have is like obviously English I think English football is the best in the world for like passion from non-league to the Premier League like because there's wherever you go there's going to be passionate fans for every club mm. whereas obviously in Portugal that's maybe the case still but it's Porto sporting Benfica. You even if you support a lower team, like a lot of people still support one of the big three. So the passion you see there is just like I have I've never seen anything close in England. Like and I, I don't think I will. It's not just a passion for the club; it's also hatred for the other club. So like every Benfica fan genuinely despises Porto. It's not like Liverpool and United where they'll like have a bit of banter about it, and other, a lot of them hate each other. Like still, but. They, they literally like despise each other. Like if you wear a Porto shirt in the Benfica end, then you, you might not make out a lie, which isn't, that's not a nice thing, but that, that's just how deep the hatred runs. Yeah, I went, I went to go to a Benfica game in January, actually, right before lockdown. Um, and I can totally vouch for the atmosphere. It was absolutely amazing. But um, yeah. yeah, I've got a Benfica shirt. I wouldn't go as far as saying I'm a Benfica fan, but I don't want to rattle you. But Porto, <laughs> maybe I'll go to them next and then decide who I want to support. Uh, well, I think this season, Benfica are going to... They're just that... They've they just got a lot of money compared to Porto because Porto spent badly in the last mm. 10 years. So how much does football play a part in choosing where you want to travel to? <laughs> Not that my girlfriend will approve, but I think it's like I always, I always have to see. Like we went to... For her... An example for this, we went to Paris for her birthday one year and <laughs> conveniently coincided with Neymar <laughs> making his debut against Toulouse for PSG. She was like, oh, what are we doing tonight? I was like, um, I've got us tickets to go watch PSG. <laughs> so we had to, I think I always, I think I just have to, like conveniently we'll go to a country where I think we went to Sweden conveniently as soon as the English football season ended just so we could go to a game up there because the season runs over. I think the problem is, like, it, it does play a massive part. Like, if I go to anywhere, I have to at least try to get to a football game, which maybe mm. isn't healthy, but also it's, like, my passion. So It like sounds it. exactly like me, though. I'd drag my girlfriend <laughs> to uh, just try and list them. Benfica, New York Red Bulls, 
uh, <laughs> I can't think of any more now, but there, there'll definitely be more and more to come as well. I kind of feel like whilst you're in these countries, you might as well have a look at the fixture list and try and plot it so you get yeah, a exactly. Trade. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the, uh, yeah, it just is the best way. And always, my girlfriend always enjoys it as well. It's not like she's always like, oh, I hate this. Mm. They they always end up enjoying it. I think. Yeah. No, maybe maybe we're lucky. Yeah. <laughs>